All right, good morning, everybody, and uh, happy Friday, week nine, last day of session. Uh, I think they're scheduled to drop the hanky sometime mid morning. So uh, they got their budget submitted in time for the mandatory cooling off period so they can they can end on time. And uh, I've got the last bill report from Laura. Thank you very much. Uh, so everybody should have that in your inboxes. I'm going to go ahead and share screen. Um, I have annotated the bills uh, that have passed um, and that will be headed to the governor at some point. Uh, so the little green notes here are, are, are my annotations. They won't be in your in your copy, but um, that'll just save you from having to click on the links and look them up. So uh, this was kind of a just under the wire yesterday. Um, uh, the beach. Um, Bacteriological sampling program transfer from DOH to DEP that did pass yesterday. Uh, this happened with one of these procedural moves. I think I mentioned last week that if a bill has made it through at least one committee in one chamber, um, it completely passes the other chamber, um, then uh, it can be pulled out of committee uh, laid on the table. And the uh, in this case, the Senate version um, I think is what was picked up uh, by the House and passed, or, or maybe I have that backwards. But but anyway, it was that it was done in a procedural move yesterday. Um, 1386, the DEP bill um, uh, passed, uh, it, it so it is all the way through. Uh, same thing with the stormwater rule that was passed uh, in the House uh, on Tuesday. Read read the third time and passed on Tuesday. Uh, this is another one where the House ended up taking up the Senate version. At, at the end of the day, they were they were um, identical versions, but the House did take up the Senate bill and pass it on Tuesday. Um, the uh, the funding bill. So this is the one with the Seminole Tribe Compact. Um, I have done an outline of of all fifteen sections of this bill uh, to. Uh, uh, you know, kind of outline wh where all the money is going. Uh, Laura, I'll ship that outline to you after the call so you can send that out with the budget highlights. I think this is worth uh, folks looking at. Um, this is the one that had the uh, water quality work program in it in its first version, creating a new water quality work program. It doesn't have it in the past version, but it does have something like a water quality work program like or light. Um, it does have a multi-year project implementation a component to the water quality improvement grant program. And there are additional criteria for multi-year project implementation. So um, and, and new reporting requirements for progress of multi-year projects. So I think, you know, just reading the tea leaves here, and it's going to take a lot of time, I think, for people to fully unpack this thing and understand everything in it. But um, it, it, well, and how it's going to be implemented. But it, it seems to me that the water quality improvement grant program is being fashioned into a water quality work program type of you know type of structure. Um, so again, I've got an outline of that. I'll ship that out. You know, once we get you know uh, more detailed analysis, or if you want to read the bill analysis, you're welcome to. But uh, but once there's more understanding of the implementation of this, uh, this will be something we'll be working on in the off season for sure. So that's 1638. Uh, the mitigation bill 1532 passed. Um, lots of little tweaks in here to wetland mitigation banking. So please like take a look at that if you are in that space or interested in that. The uh, water well contractor license bill passed. And now we're starting to get into companion. So there's mitigation by true now ratification bill. OK, so so this is one. Uh, now we're starting to get into some dead bills. I'm not going to go through all of the dead bills. Basically, everything passed here is dead. But I'm going to mention a couple a couple that were on the verge of passage and they seem to have died. Um, so one of them is the bill that has the stormwater side slopes and also has a tweak to the uh, liability pollution liability for permit holders that are in compliance. And, and this would have shielded them from third party liability. The um, uh, as it made it through both the House and Senate, 
uh, it was moving through on party lines, but it appears to have died in the House inexplicably with no uh, no final vote, which either means they ran out of time or the um, the noise generated by the by the trial attorneys um, somehow got this thing killed. Um, and I think I will stop there unless people have questions about bills. I think everything else on here is dead. So just these handful of bills at the top in the environmental list are the ones that pass. Any questions on bills or bills who passed or died? Okay. Hey, uh, sorry, Jeff. This is yeah, Gary Holwalt, the um, mitigation bank proximity that died. Mitigation bank proximity. Will you help me? I need a, I need another word or two so I can understand what you're saying. Uh, you know, there, there was a bill that's at the bottom of the list that uh, had a proximity factor so that you could use mitigation credits outside of the basins. Oh, uh, I think that may be in here. Oh, did they combine it? Uh, let me... Authorizes in such basins requires specified. Oh, I, I know who you're talking about being able to use the basin next door. That yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I think you're right. I, I don't think that's in here. Or I'm, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said I think it's in here. I don't think it's in here. Um, and I think it has, it, it must have died. Keyword search. Okay, yeah, 1646, dead. Yeah. Yeah, dead. Any other, uh, any other questions about bills? Okay, here's, um, here is a quick run through of some budget highlights. So the budget did come out uh, midweek. Um, it's got, I mean, it's hundreds of pages long, right? And anybody who's ever tried to find something in the budget, thank goodness for keyword searching. But this is the uh, kind of the top level items or top line items for various programs uh, in the environmental space. So the, the total top line number for agriculture, environment, and general government was 9.9 .9 billion. And then these are the, again, some some key items out of there. Uh, notably absent from this list is the Everglades. Uh, there's a, a whole chunk of spending on the Everglades, of course, as there is, seems like every year. Um, but this is the non-Everglades environmental stuff. So lots for land acquisition, lots for land management. This is a really big number for land management. We haven't had anything close to that. I think 25 million was as close as, or, or the most we've spent on land management in a while. So this is going to include FWC, DACs, DP parks, DP trails, you know, so it's got a few things in there, but that's a big number. Um, Resilient Florida got 100, Water Quality Grant Program got 79. So this is a little down compared to prior years. Um, however, just in case you're wondering, well, where, you know, why is it down? There's 410 million in member in, you know in, in standalone water projects or member water projects so i suspect that some of the money some some of the water quality projects are going to be in here the question will be how much the governor you know does pulls his veto pen out for this for this list um uh rural and family land stewardship this is another really big number for this program this is for less than fee acquisition, like conservation easements over agriculture land. Um, here is, uh, I'm sorry, I should not have jumped into water quality grant being low. Uh, th this is a, I, I forgot, this is a, a all under 1639. There is a chunk of money added to the water quality grant program in 1639. And I think that's what this is. And then the the, the top line number is 135. So my, my apologies. It's it's down a little bit, but it's not down a lot from last year. 135. Um, Indian River Lagoon has its own uh, 75 million. Keys has its own 20. Uh, Community Trust is a small land acquisition program. These are all the member line item 
member projects. And then um, more in here in Florida Forever, Division of State Lands, and um, these are for uh, local grants and aids for park projects, for like county city park projects. That's all I've got so far. I'm still going through the bill or the budget bill. Um, there's a lot of lot of little things to kind of tease out of it, and I still clearly I got to get myself organized on what what money is under what bucket. But here's some some highlights for y'all. Hey Jeff, this is Melissa from WGI. What are you mm -hmm. hearing about the the governor and how much he's going to use his veto pen? <laughs> Uh, yes, 10 different people, and you're going to get at least five different versions. Um, uh, you know, last year he did not veto a lot. The year before that he did. So uh, he does not have a, a, a consistent track record. So um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure who would know other than him Thanks. or his inner circle. Yeah, sorry. Eleven minutes in. Would would any of y'all like to spend some time on this uh, environmental funding bill, the the Seminole Gaming contract or compact, sixteen thirty eight? I would like to hear some. If, yeah. If okay. Can. Sure thing. Let me see if I can navigate the screen around. So this is the new. The new version, there's an older version that I outlined, but the, the latest version has 16 sections, including the effectiveness, but 15 substantive sections. And this is just an outline of what's in each section. Um, so no analysis here, just a straight outline. So, so the first one establishes the legislative intent. So uh, supporting, all right, so sorry, starting with dedicated funding for these categories, conservation lands, resiliency and clean water infrastructure and dedicating 96% uh, of the gaming compact money for these purposes. Um, also in the legislative intent are, you know, kind of the, uh, you know, clear, compelling interest, you know, legislature supports kind of language. Um, the value of land cancer conservation and support of the wildlife corridor, uh, improving and supporting land management for parks, trails, etc., addressing sea level rise and dealing with, uh, and this is these are kind of the legislature's words, the funding gap for water, you know, clean water infrastructure. And so what you'll see is that 96% is then split into these categories. And this is why there was there was leftover money that's that's thrown into the water quality improvement grant program is, is there's a formula approach to the um, the gaming compact money. It's 26 percent or 100 million, whichever is. Less. I think, uh, well, th these are all capped at 100, so there must have. Yeah, there's more money. So so the way this is set up is you're going to get 126 percent each or 100 million each and then whatever's left over goes into the water quality improvement grant program. So that's the that's the formula. So that's why you're getting 100 million each one of these categories and then 76 million this year is into there, which means there's 376 million is the 96% chunk of the gaming compact money for for 24 25. So far so good. So okay. wait, Jeff, just, just wanted yeah. to clarify that. So 96% of the money that the Seminoles are given is going to this or 90%, 96% of the funding is being allocated. No, 96% of the entire gaming compact revenue to the state is going to these okay. things. Sure. The other 4% presumably are administration or whatever. I don't know mm -hmm. where the other 4% are. Thanks. All right. Um, now, if you know, before everybody gets excited that this is another 300, 400 million a year on top of what's normally being spent a year. Normally, when these de dedicated funding sources come in, they end up displacing other, you know, general revenue. So it's it's too soon to say whether this is additive or just a funding replacement uh, function. Okay. Uh, 
so so now a couple of new so new programs there are a couple of new things in here one is the local trail management grant program of course i created an acronym i don't know if anybody is using it but i just didn't want to repeat that so this is for its grants and aids to local government it's so local governments can apply for grants through this new program to to add a county or city you know, just non-state trails that can match up with uh, the straight the, the state trail system. All right, so your your priority is to support the Florida Greenways and Trails program, and if local government is connecting trails up to the Florida Greenways and Trails program, then it can get money for uh, for those uh, the creation of those trails and the maintenance of those trails. And the local governments can get O and M money to support pieces of the Florida Greenways and Trails designated trails that are within their cities or counties. And then there's priority for anything related to or connected with or can provide extra land for the wildlife corridor. All right. Okay. Next section is is wildlife corridor. It creates some a couple of new. Uh, well, well, one new way to to secure corridor rights through voluntary agreements with landowners, and it allows the use of compact money to pay for those agreements. So this is less than fee acquisition. Uh, it creates a land management uniform accounting council. And it is, it's charged with recommending, you can see it here, most efficient and effective, effective use of land acquisition and land management funds. I'm sorry, land management only, not land acquisition. This is for land management. And they've got to do, they got to send a report to the governor's office and legislature by January of 2027. Um, water quality improvement grant program. So this is where it's adding the multi-year um, a component to the current grant program. So kind of like a, a water work program light. It will, it will um, add multi-year project implementation to criteria. So you are going to get a benefit in the water quality improvement grant program if you are proposing something that has, that is part of a multi-year project or multi-year program. It does require some new reporting for progress and if you are not um, awarded in a prior year it adds there's another criteria for kind of bumping you up if you get if you miss a year um uh you you, you get to add that you know that, that's another that's another criterion in the in the overall structure i don't know whether that's going to automatically bump you into the money but it's an additional criteria that's being added so those are tweaks to the current water quality improvement grant, grant grant program. All right, the rest of these six through fifteen are non-recurring uh, funds that are coming out of the gaming compact, by the way. And so there is actually a bunch more than three hundred and seventy-nine because all this other money is also in there. It's all this is non-recurring, so one-time money uh, to University of Florida, two million. Uh, you got five million for Florida Gulf Coast, and then check this out: another hundred and fifty million for Florida Gulf Coast University for two different studies. A uh, hundred million non-recurring for to the Department of Financial Services for land acquisition. That's a new one. Didn't know they were in the land acquisition business, but they're getting hundred million. Four million is this is to kick off the local government trail program 32 non-recurring to dep for parks 32 non-recurring to dax for lands 32 non-recurring to fwc for species and lands 100 million non-recurring to the sea level rise resilience plan and 79 non-recurring okay so i'm i'm sorry i need to go back and and restate something so when when you have a statutory um formula like this what they're what they're doing down here in these non-recurring sections is they are divvying up some of that some of this stuff 
So I, 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 I misstated, I misspoke when um, I was wrong when I said this is additional. This is actually divvying up. Sorry about that. Um, because what you have in here is this 100 million for land management line item in here that's in the formula. This is the this is how they divvied it up right down here. Oh, uh, no, this may actually be new. I'll have to double check. I'll have to do the math. Anyway, there's a lot in here. This this particular line item is really interesting to me just in the. Pure, you know, kind of handout. It's, it just looks like a boondoggle. 150 million to study the health and ecosystem of Lake Okeechobee. Or Florida Gulf Coast University. Not picking on them, just seems like a giveaway. Those non-recurring are all greater than than any of the uh, 100, 300 million above, though, and the 70. Yeah, if you do, I, Gary, I agree with you. And that's why when I was looking at all this, I thought maybe there, there is definitely extra compact money besides this. Or there's extra money being put into 1638 that is not coming from the compact. But 1638 has all of this in here. Jeff, this is Brent. When you said that this is the light version of the water quality improvement grant program, what makes it light? What was the difference in the uh, amended update? Well, uh, I'm being very nostalgic now going back to this. So this is the as filed. It created a new statute called the Water Quality Work Program. It created a revolving loan, loan program. It created this or established this five-year work program concept with remember with fgcu de <laughs> developing the criteria developing eligibility priorities establishing all this with a study um this is gone this was amended out however these multi-year project implementation schedule is now added to the current water quality improvement grant program. So I can't explain to you what the reasoning is, why they abandoned it. Um, I, I wonder, so I'm just pure, purely speculative, wondering whether there were concerns that this thing would take over the water quality improvement grant program, or could the two things work in parallel? Does one uh, displace the other? Um, because this added the water quality work program to the water protection and sustainability program. So it, it, it looks like it was additive, but I don't know, or, may, or maybe they just couldn't get their heads around it. I think that we could still end up getting here. Um, you know, this, this FGCU developing criteria and priorities, there, there could have been a feeling that well, gee whiz, why would you create a program before, you know, we even have it all figured out? You know, that could have been another issue. I, I'm not sure, Brent. I was a little disappointed to see it come out, but I also had a lot of like my when I read this thing for the first time, my, you know, my eyebrows shot up just because of it, it does. It, it did seem a little half baked and it it, you know, it, it set a university in charge of creating the criteria and priorities for it, which I also had some concerns about. So in, in one way, I'm, I'm a little relieved that it's not in here in this format. So I'm calling it light because it's got this multi-year project implementation in the, in the new list of criteria under this program. That makes sense. Thanks. Uh, one more question. So now we have a dedicated 100 million, it looks like, to the Resilient Florida Trust Fund. 
I could be wrong, but there was a portion of the dock stamps that used to be Sadowski housing that are for, I thought, Resilient Florida or were going that direction before, or maybe I'm wrong, but just wondering about the additive versus offset. Yeah, um, I, I, and the money I actually, Sadowski. it's a great question. I don't know yet. And I think we're going to need to see, I, I need to, I need to study that part of the budget to understand that. But, but as you just pointed out, when like when doc step revenue came in, that displaced some other revenue. It, it wasn't all accretive or additive. And I suspect the same is going to be true with the compact money. And this this will be the first year where compact money and doc stamp revenue and Sadowski money, you know, are, are all going to some overlapping, potentially overlapping purposes. So we'll have to, I, I haven't figured out yet what the split is. I think we need to do a little more research to the uh, uh, Lee County, Florida Gulf Coast operation. Uh, the conference, Water Resources Conference, the end of January, um, obviously they were working on getting some of these types of, of funding and uh, uh, they're structuring themselves to, to be the water resources of the 11 universities. And uh, uh, so, uh, somebody but like Rick Barger, Barbara has enough time maybe to go dig into it and report. I've I've visited the campus just because I was down there, had a reason to do it. And uh, I think I could jog around the campus and not break a sweat. <laughs> and and not because I'm I'm fit. It's just it's not big. Uh, kind of created I mean, I don't know how new it is. I know it's new. I don't know how new. Uh, a lot of it was under construction. It's a good operation. Hey, Jeff, before we, before we jump off, could you go back and kind of explain the final disposition of the stormwater rule? Oh, yes, uh, it's passed. And the version of, so, so the, the, the latest, uh, changes that were adopted in the, uh, I know I'm going to mess this up if I try to guess. Um, and I've got a coin flip and it's one or the other, but there were some, uh, the last changes were made in either the House or the Senate. It doesn't, doesn't really matter for the purpose of this conversation. And then the, and then those changes were adopted by the other, other chamber. So, um, at the very end, uh, a couple more tweaks were made to, uh, bring in or grandfather some additional categories of projects that either had PUDs or had ecosystem management agreements or had had you know uh, already planned out projects. Those were grandfathered, and then the water quality standards in Section 8.3 of the Applicant's Handbook, uh, the time uh, time was extended from 12 to 18 months where you could you could get your application complete by 18 months of the effectiveness date and still not have to meet the new water quality standards in 8.3. Now, I don't know that it's going to be six additional months because the other thing that got changed is the original bill draft had an effectiveness date of July 1 and the as passed version said it's effective upon becoming law. So depending on when the governor signs it, that will start the 18 month clock. All the other provisions of the rule will become effective when the rule is signed. And what I mean by that is a new project coming out may not have to meet the water quality standards, but they're going to have to meet the new O&M requirements, for example. Like, do you have a prediction on when it'll be signed? Is it like next week or is it next month? Don't know. No, no telling. Okay. Um, they haven't presented it to the governor, which would start a clock. Uh, they can sit on it for a pretty long time, the, the House and Senate. So it has to be uh, presented to the governor for signature, and then that starts his clock. So they're, the legislature still controls the calendar right now. I have not heard anything about a, you know, a bill signing ceremony or anything like that, but I suspect this is one of those bills where he may want to do that. And so the there'll be some coordination between the governor's legislative office and 
uh, the legislature on when it's presented so he can do his thing. Jeff, are, is there going to be a red line version of the applicant's handbook volume one that incorporates these changes? Oh, uh, yeah, I think there probably will be. Um, I know the department has one because they were maintaining a strike and underline as the amendments were going around. Um, I will make sure to get a hand, uh, get my hands on one. That's great. Great idea. Thank you. I appreciate it. Problem. Hey, Jeff, anything new on the 404 this uh, this week? There were uh, the deadline for the petitioners to file a response to the department's amended stay was yesterday. They did file. Um, I have not read it yet. Uh, but I have a one paragraph summary of what they said. I suspect I'm going to predict that they were against it. One second. Man, you got a good crystal ball, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I, that's not a real hard uh, prediction. Uh, yeah, Center for Biological Diversity is opposing the stay. But sorry, I didn't even have a, a paragraph. I had a sentence. It is unclear at this time how long it will take for the court to rule on the motion for the stay or the other remaining counts of the litigation. So, you know, he didn't act on the entire case. He acted on a portion of the case when he vacated uh, the rule or the, the decision. Um, this action on the stay uh, he can sit on that for days, weeks, or months. months. Yeah. That's Gary Ward, I still believe that if, if you want to get something done, you've got to go to the Congress and, and, and make some tweaks. And uh, that can be done quick. You're talking about this Congress, Gary? <laughs> well, uh, they certainly they certainly I'm just wondering which Congress you're talking about. Is there a Congress of the Conquered Public? <laughs> you keep open. <laughs> You'll right. be down here probably as the chief lobbyist. <laughs> All right. I can't think think of too many things this Congress can agree on. And I am certain that one of them, uh, any the, the, the <laughs> regulation of waters in the United States is not going to be something they're going to agree on. Face to face, we'll, we'll get something done. We should send you to Congress, Gary. I'm too old. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, did you watch the watch them on TV last night? No, I did not. I had had another meeting. <laughs> Too I many think you qualify. He qualifies a whippersnapper up there. I think. All right. Well, it's nine thirty-three. Thank you, everybody. Um, hope everybody has a wonderful weekend. And uh, let me know if you, anybody has any questions or follow-ups for me. Uh, Laura, I owe you a couple things, so let me get those to you before you send that out. Thank you. Thank you for everything, Jeff. No, you're Thank welcome. you, Jeff. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks, thanks Jeff. Jeff. Thank, you, Jeff. Bye -bye. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.